After a long second patrol, me and the crew took a long needed rest. Some of us went down to St. Narzir where we saw the damage from the British commando raid. The dry dock that the British attacked was in absolute ruins. There goes the only dry dock on the Atlantic coast capable of repairing the turpits. Meanwhile, the U-105 was getting ready for a third war patrol. After around 20 days of refit, the U-105 was ready for action once again. New equipment was installed on board, sonar gear and a decoy launcher. These will be great assets for us in the months ahead. The U-105 is to patrol the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. We will stop in grid CC-61 and refuel at U-461, a U-tanker operating in the Northwest Atlantic. On the moonless night of April 12th, with a belly full of fuel, food, and provisions, our boat slipped away from her pen in Lorient. Hello everybody, Wolfpack345 here, and welcome back to another episode of Silent Hunter 3. We are starting our third patrol here, and as you can see, the U-105 is leaving Lorient in the distance. There's Lorient back there, and you can actually see the subpins as well. But we are currently leaving. After around 25 days in port, we have started our third patrol. We have a few goodies installed on board the boat as well, such as new sonar equipment, and also the Bold One decoy launchers, which I'm quite excited for. So that way, uh, whenever I fat finger the J key on my keyboard, uh, I'll actually be jettisoning <laughs> decoys out of our boat instead of just nothing. So get ready for that. Uh, I'm gonna be very wasteful with those decoys because I always happen to hit that key. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop to the map and see what's what, where are we going? Well, we're currently cruising out of Lorient, and I want to be sure that we are not going to run into any mines here. So let's check here. Where is Lorient? Oh my goodness! There we go. So it looks like we're getting a we're getting a little close to mines. So we're going to go ahead and jog our course a little bit to the east. That should be good enough to avoid those mi that minefield right there. All right. Now with that out of the way, let's see where we're going. So the plan is. We're going to pretty much just sail all the way to U-461, where we will refuel and rearm if we have expended torpedoes out here in the North Atlantic, which is possible, but every time I make this journey, uh, it seems like I don't find very much in the Mid-Atlantic. I always find ships either, you know, pretty close to the British Isles or the American coast, but never really in between. But in the off case that... I do launch torpedoes, they will give us a few torpedoes as well. And from there, we're going to patrol or head southwest, and uh, our patrol grid is B DB75, uh, right here, right in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. And once we're there, we'll uh, meander around, probably go to Key West, and then down towards uh, you know Cuba and such. I think that might be quite exciting. I do want a little change of pace from the nasty weather of uh, New York uh, like previously. So we're going to go ahead and uh, patrol the smooth Caribbean waters. I hope. So uh, it might be a death trap as well. I'm sure there's quite a bit of air cover here, but uh, that's something we'll have to deal with. Uh, we should be actually getting Metox fairly soon, which is a radar warning receiver, which I am looking forward to. Let's go ahead and head to the crew. We have another watchman, this guy, Carl Heinz Giesler is now a watchman as well so i can rotate him out that's about it we have a new hydrophone operator as well and also i gave some guys some medals this guy is absolutely loaded i'm sure he's going to get his own boat very soon i'm actually I, i've been meaning to talk about this after this patrol uh, there is an option in Silent Hunter 3 Commander to have realistic crew transfers so i'm going to have i'm going to enable that so that way we don't get guys like gunther von Vedden here and uh yeah he he should have his own boat at this point he should not be on the u-105 also i think that'll definitely make it more difficult thing later in the war whenever you know it gets difficult with allied escorts and everything and then we have some newbie at the helm yeah some chump who doesn't know how to repair anything as our repairman uh it's going to make things even more difficult so i really just hate myself that's really what this is coming down to, and I want to make it as hard on me as possible. And we have a little buoy making all sorts of noises. 
Uh, but we'll go ahead and head out to the Bay of Biscay here. And once it turns day, I will demonstrate the sonar and we're going to test our brand new decoy launcher and see how that works. But in the meantime, let's go ahead. We'll plot our course to U461. It's pretty much going to be a straight shot to the milk cow and then we'll head southwest, like I said. Other than that, not much to say. I think that's about it. Our torpedo loadout right now is two T2, all T2s in the bow, and then G7As uh, pretty much in the reserves, except we have a G7E in the aft reserve as well. So overwhelmingly uh, G7Es, <laughs> we have quite a bit. So that should be quite exciting. All right, so I'm gonna quit rambling now and I'll get back to you guys whenever it is daytime and we can uh, test out our new, new toys. Welcome back. We are currently maintaining a depth of around 60 meters as we transit the Bay of Biscay, especially since it's broad daylight out there and I wanna avoid any pesky RAF aircraft that are trying to kill me. So we are sitting sitting nice and happy at 59 meters and I figured this would be just a perfect time to demonstrate some of the new goodies we have on board the boat. Let's start with the least exciting one. <laughs> Let's go to the hydrophone station and uh, look at the sonar. So the sonar is exactly what you think it would be, uh, a sonar. So you can track, say, a merchant ship. Say there's a merchant ship at 320 and we'll press this button, send and it'll, we'll get a return and uh, we'll get a good range estimate of that target. Now, as you would expect, this is suicidal to do around <laughs> uh, destroyers. You do not wanna do this around warships. You, they will hear it and they will kill you. The game does not, um, like the shores will not react to this, the depth under keel ping, although they should, but the game does model this. If you send a sonar ping out, they will hear it. Okay, and now to the real exciting goodie. Let's go, we'll, we'll go to the external view for this one, and we're gonna take a look at the bold decoys. So let's go back here. I'm pretty sure the decoy gets jettisoned out of the left side of the boat. So let's go ahead and launch one out. Of the pill launcher is what the what it was kind of dubbed. So let's see, Jawohl, Herr hopefully I'm right. There we go. Oh boy, that's awesome. And there it is. It's just a little canister, 10 centimeters in diameter, and it was filled with calcium hydride, and it was just ejected out of the boat. And when mixed with salt water, calcium hydride makes a lot of hydrogen gas, as you can see right here. And uh, as you would expect, that would creates a hell of a noise. Um, but eventually, British and American sonar operators were able to tell the difference between this and this. So that is, uh, it, the success of this was kind of short-lived. Um, the British, the Royal Navy sonar operators dubbed this an SBT, uh, Submarine Bubble Target. So, uh, kind of interesting. Should be a little fun to use, actually. I'm excited to use it in combat and see how it does. Yeah, and it lasts for a surprisingly long amount of time. I didn't realize these last so long, but they last around uh, 25 to 30 minutes. So they have a pretty good lifespan, which is uh, unexpected. I was actually kind of surprised to read that. But anyway, another tool at our disposal to help us survive. Other than that, there's nothing much to say. I'm going to stay submerged as we transit the Bay of Biscay here, at least until nighttime. We will surface to recharge our batteries and uh, freshen up the boat a little bit. Uh, other than that, that's all I really have to say for the time being, so I will continue on our journey to U461. We just received an interesting radio message from U123, and I'm going to go ahead and read it off now. From Cape Canaveral to Cape Hatteras, all lights as in peacetime. Heavy traffic, but in spurts. South, south going traffic close to land, inside the 20 meter line following the base south of Cape Fear. Some air activity noted. At night, there are flares put up alongside the steamer routes. No ASDIC encountered and good listening conditions overall. Five tankers and two freighters sunk for 7,500 GRT. So pretty much the conditions on the eastern coast of the United States are more of the same. And uh, U-123 was actually Hardigan's boat 
and he died last year, so he lived a very long time. Uh, he's actually a pretty interesting U-boat commander, and uh, it's worth reading up on him. Anyway, I, I figured I would just go ahead and share that, and we'll continue onward. I do want to share more of the radio messages as the war progresses. It's just, uh, last patrol, there weren't too many <laughs> interesting ones, but that one kind of stood out to me. Anyway, we're still in BF-54. We haven't made very much progress since our last little update, so I will keep going onward. So, our radio operator picked up a signal from the ship heading northeast speed medium. Uh, and it's fairly close. I think it's close enough that we're actually going to pursue it. So let's go ahead and turn. Let's just head north for the time being. And let's go ahead and bump our speed up to a head full, please. Uh, I have a feeling this is probably going to be an enemy ship, just given the direction it's heading. But we will see. It could very well be neutral as well. Let's go ahead and bring out this chart. Let's see, so he is going medium speed. I'm gonna just guess that's 10 knots, and well, let's go ahead and plot a course towards it. There we go. Just heading there. Please, I'll head forward. I suspect it'll take us, probably won't take us, let's see, two hours. Yeah, so going 10 knots in two hours, this ship will move 37 kilometers. Let's give him some extra time since we've wasted some. Let's just go straight 40. Wow, he's booking it. Okay. We should be able to make visual contact, yeah, before then. So, yeah, two hours around there. We should be able to see him before this point. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and use some time compression. Since it is a lone ship, or at least we think it's a lone ship, we do have the possibility of using the deck gun when the weather is nice and calm like it is. Although it is broad daylight and we are pretty close to uh, British air bases, so Coastal Command might have a say about that. We'll see though. Let's go ahead and uh, use a little bit of time compression here as we close towards our maybe target. Let's see, we should be spotting him fairly soon, I want to say. Let's make sure we have all of our... What? What? You need to get on the bridge, young man. There we go. Perfect. Oh, there we go. Right on cue. Thank you, game. Just when my commentary was starting to get boring, you enlightened me with this. So, three, four, five. What the f... Schiff gesichtet. What? Lage, drei, vier, fünf. Große Entfernung. You, my friend, got some good eyes. Three, four, six. Well, I don't see it. That has me kind of worried that it's a sailboat. Uh, let's see. Let's be exact. Even this is... Okay. Okay, I do see it. Barely. I can just, like, see the funnel. Um, it is definitely a merchant ship. It's not a sailboat. So we've won in that department. That is a win. Let's see. It's still heading northeast as well. Let's go ahead and plot a new course for you, my friend. There we go, and let's change course just a little bit so we don't close too, too quickly. I don't want him to see us, especially if he's not sailing alone. I want to be sure he does not have an escort. Let's go ahead and uh, jog our course a little east. And let's get up here, and where is he exactly, please? Okay. Okay. Looks like a smaller merchant ship, and it doesn't seem like there's any any warships in the area. So I think we can probably go about shelling this freighter. Uh, it's kind of risky during daytime this close to Britain, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. it. Looks like he's detected us anyway. Alright, let's go ahead and just straight head straight towards him. Change my course. Let's just head due north now. Neuer Kurs, zwei. Where are you? There you are. He is way too far to make a deck gun attack. So I probably will cut here and get back to you guys when we're in a little closer range to open fire with our deck gun. Because, I mean, 
who wants who wants to just sit here and watch us chase down a merchant ship for what 15 some minutes all my men are terrified even though he's not shooting at us stand up they're all popping a squat anyway <laughs> i will get back to you guys very soon okay so i think this ship was escorted uh there's a destroyer bearing down straight at us Schiff gesichtet. Lage zwei. Große Entfernung. i don't think he's opened fire just yet um let's turn around Neuer Kurs, all ahead flank eins, sieben, neun. Neuer Kurs, zwei, sieben, eins. Wahnsinnige Fahrt voraus. he hasn't opened fire yet Wahnsinnige Fahrt voraus. okay let's get ready to crash dive here let's see yeah it doesn't look like a flower class if it was a flower class i think i could outrun it so we're going to go ahead and make our turn now on the surface and then emergency dive He's not shooting at us. That's good. I understand why you are crouching now. I'm kind of scared too. Alright. Let's go. Crash dive. Ah! Get under. All right, perfect. I <laughs> that was definitely a bad move on my part. I kind of thought that ship was uh, unescorted, but I guess I I need to be a little more certain about that, don't I? Well, in any case, thankfully we got under pretty quickly here. Let's go ahead and head to the hydrophone station. Looks like we're heading. Yeah, let's go ahead and just go back on our normal course. I am not going to pursue this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his escort has definitely scared me off. I'll head slow, please. Let's go down to around 80 meters for the time being. And I think we might be able to test out our decoys. Let's get rid of all this crap. You know, maybe... I was thinking of attempting a down-the-throat shot, but he is closing so rapidly. Let's go ahead and take a listen. He's at 110. Yeah, he's hauling ass. I'm not even going to try it. We'd have to come up, you know, 60-some meters before he's right on top of us, ready to blow us to smithereen. So, not worth it. <laughs> not worth risking our boat. But he is closing very quickly. Let's go ahead and rig for solid running now. He's around two kilometers away. And let's go down to around two knots. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy. Derzeitige Fahrt. Eins Noten. Derzeitige Fahrt. Eins Noten. There we go. Our RPM is down to about 50. So I think we are good. And now it's really just a waiting game for us. Maybe he'll go right on past us. Maybe he'll overestimate range. Let's see. He's going to cross into our baffles. Now he's in our baffles. Uh, I don't hear any Aztec yet. Keyword. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and there we go. He's cleared our baffles. Oh, he's going right on. Perfect. I don't. Oh, he's coming back, but I think he's searching behind us in this area. I don't think we're even gonna have to uh, use a decoy. Oh, he's already given up. Wow, that was that was actually rather easy. <laughs> Normally I cut because uh, these destroyers do not give up very easy. They definitely like to uh, really just like to follow you around for hours. But this guy did his job. He submerged us, he suppressed us, and uh, now we're going away. So uh, that's really all you can ask him to do. So we're going to continue onward. I'm not going to re-engage these guys because uh, well, that destroyer kind of scared me. Not worth it. And we're going to go ahead and continue onward to the U-461, where we will refuel. But I'm going to stay submerged for about an hour, so we'll, we'll surface at around 
uh, 3 o'clock. So, I will see you guys maybe then, maybe a little later on. Who knows? Depends what I feel like doing. And there she is, our resupply boat. We finally have made it after a very uneventful journey. We have not been sighted or detected anything um, on that whole journey. So it's really just been, uh, you know, <laughs> a bunch of boredom. Anyway, there is the U-Tanker, so we're going to pull up right alongside her. Even though you don't have to, to resupply, I just want to, just for uh, immersion. <laughs> so let's go ahead and close in on the tanker. Let's go ahead and go one-third here. Change course just a little bit. And I will show you guys actually how to resupply at the U-Tankers. I've received some questions as to how to actually do it, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that here and now. So we'll go ahead and pull right alongside her. Uh, these weather conditions are really choppy. I, I think it might be a little too rough to do this in real life, although I have seen footage of U-boats uh, refueling and everything in pretty rough seas. So it's interesting I'm not sure if this would be uh, too rough to do it I kind of imagine so but uh, the game won't stop us so we'll go ahead and do it just to save some time all right looks like the tanker has pretty much come to an all stop for us let's go ahead and one third please let's take a look at it through the Yuzo there you go, you can see the <laughs> the thickness of it, it's just full of food and torpedoes just for us. And probably a few other U-boats, but yeah, that is one thick boat. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Alright, so we'll go ahead and pull, pull up. Hello, milk cow. Alright, nice and easy. We don't want to ram it. We don't want to cause damage to us or the boat. Let's go ahead and adjust just a little bit. And this is pretty cool. Rudder and midships, please. And all stop. Hello. Alright, so let's go ahead and... So this is how you refuel. You just go here, press exit patrol, and then continue mission. So repairs and refueling at U-Tankers finished, uh, we then not load any torpedoes because we had a belly full, but as you can see, we are completely refueled. So how about that? Isn't that just awesome? And there we go. Good, good picture moment. The two U-Boats. There we go, looks like she's reversing, <laughs> trying to get out of the way of us, but that's, that's a okay. And let's just take a look. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow, that is that is amazing. <laughs> Very large fuel tanks and everything there. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get on our way. We don't want to linger too long just in case any British ashores come to blow this thing out of the freaking water. So we're, I've decided we're going to go ahead and we're going to just skirt past Bermuda, Bermuda. I think that might be a little interesting. We might get some air activity at the very least, so uh, something to wake me up. And then we'll sail down here past Florida, Miami, and Key West, and then to our objective, which is 75, I think, right there. So we'll pass through a little bit of shallow water, but that's okay. Uh, I'm hoping we can get quite a few ships coming out of Mobile and Bolixi here and uh, maybe even Galveston and Corpus Christi but we'll see uh, I might travel over here I might not I do want to go down here towards uh, the Bahamas and everything or I guess the Bahamas are right here but some of these other smaller islands like Jamaica and such and uh, really just explore that is what I want to do, explore. So, we are continuing onward. We'll go ahead and ha bring her down to two-thirds. Let's check on our crew. I've been neglecting them. Uh, looks like everyone is A-OK -okay for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and switch these guys out because uh, I want them to be nice and refreshed for whenever we actually have combat. And we're going to part ways with the U-461. We'll leave them in the sunset. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you for the fuel and the food, probably. Um, yeah, good luck. Happy seas. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and continue onward on our patrol, and I will get back to you guys soon. I do suspect we'll detect some shipping as we get close to Bermuda here, but who knows? Maybe we'll sink here mysteriously. We'll see. I just wanted to give you guys a brief update on our position. So I went ahead and decided we hit Bermuda, and then I decided just to sail west. Uh, and pretty much just follow the coast down and around Florida here and into the Gulf of Mexico. I figured we'd be able to catch a little bit of traffic down here. And uh, I got some reports of ships heading fast, uh, but north. And I did not want to give chase, especially. Well, fuel's okay, but I it's just... They're going the opposite way of our patrol area. And I want to get finished with our patrol area first and uh, move down here towards the Caribbean. So... Just a brief update on that. We're currently cruising in fairly shallow water. Let's see, what is the depth here? 41 meters, so uh, not great, but not bad either. It could be much, much worse. But we're very close to these deeper waters here where we can run off and hide if need be. Uh, crew's doing just peachy. The weather is kind of crap. Uh, still high winds and uh, very large waves here. So makes it a little bit difficult to uh, conduct torpedo attacks in, but that's okay. I'm expecting once we get to the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, it's gonna be a lot nicer. But anyway, we'll continue to patrol off the coast of Florida here, and I will get back to you guys pretty soon, I suspect. Ship spotted pretty much dead ahead of us, and it looks fairly large. It's pretty far out there. I can just make it out through the fog, so. And it looks like it's sailing straight for us. It's heading northwest, so interception here should be fairly easy. Let's go ahead and change course here. And we'll pretty much be set to intercept the target here soon. I am, I think I'm going to use sonar to actually get his, uh, get his range. I think that might be a little bit of fun. <laughs> so we really just, let's see you. What's the range to target right now on the bridge? 9,200 meters. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and dive down the periscope. Let's check out our torpedo loadout. So we're loaded with G7Es in the forward four torpedo tubes, and we also have G7Es in the aft tubes as well. So not much variety and choice here. <laughs> I will be using G7Es. Let's go ahead and get everyone to battle stations here. And yeah, you can go ahead and get some rest as we operate here. And they'll move over to the diesels or the electric engines when we get submerged on the way. Yeah, these weather conditions have been pretty rough pretty much since our encounter with the U-461. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Sometimes these sea states last for an extremely long time in game when in real life, the weather would not be this poor constantly. You'd have some breaks in between rough seas, but uh, it's just the way the game handles weather. We do need to be careful, though, because we are going to get fairly close to this ship to launch our eels, and I don't want my conning tower breaching the surface. So that is, we're going to have to operate a little deeper, probably closer to 13 and 14 meters as opposed to our standard 12 to 11. We'll go ahead and ahead standard or full excuse me to close distance and when we get a little bit closer we will begin getting speed estimates and range estimates and all that fun jazz as we prepare our shots it looks like we've lost contact our hydrophone operator can't hear the merchant ship over our bloody engines but let's go ahead we can probably slow it down now all right let's take a look he's at around 280 let's go ahead and raise scope I thought I fixed this, but apparently not. Oh well. It's not that big of a deal. Let's see, 280. There we go. Uh, it's an ore carrier. Go ahead and lock on target and plug that in here. That's a fairly good target for our first catch of the patrol. It blows that little <laughs> passenger cargo or whatever it was out of the water that we almost shot at earlier. I say almost shot at. We didn't really almost shoot at it. That Tommy Destroyer uh, scared us away. But, alright. Ore Carrier. Let's see. How many tons is that? Let's 
go ahead and go here. 7,000 tons, not too shabby if I do say so myself. So I'll probably plug two torpedoes in to that ship. I'll probably shoot tubes one and four. Let's go ahead and set that up though. We'll shoot tubes one and four. What's the draft on this vessel? 6.6 .6 meters, so we'll set our draft to, we'll just do seven meters. That should be okay, and we'll launch magnetic. Speed slow because we don't really have a choice, and we're going to try to get nice and close to this ship here. Uh, we're going to guess guesstimate speed for the time being, just 10 knots. Plug that in for now. Not that it really matters. And let's go ahead and. I was kind of worried the ship was zigzagging there. I was like, God darn it. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start timing her, and get a good speed estimate here. I do want to use this during this patrol, the this wheel. Uh, I will do it, this patrol, I am determined to. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at it, and I haven't really had much time to play offline and practice with it, so I might be doing it on the fly in one of these later patrols. I also want to do the Dick O'Kane method again, uh, like I did in Silent Hunter 4, because that is some of the most fun I've had in Silent Hunter, <laughs> doing those. Trying new methods and doing new things with the game is always exciting, and I want to showcase a wide variety of ways to attack a target in this game before attacking targets is uh, much, much more difficult later in the war. We're, we're getting there. It's already May 1942. In no time, it'll be May 1943, which, uh, as many of you know, is Black May for the U-boats, so... Exciting stuff. This guy is going pretty fast. I do suspect probably 10 knots. Let's go ahead and use some time compression here to speed this up. This video has been probably going to be a little longer than my others, but that's okay with me. Hopefully it's okay with you. All right, 10 seconds and 15. Hopefully we hit this ship. I would be mighty disappointed if we completely whiffed. Let's go ahead. Eight knots. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get a. He's on a course of around. What? Three, two, four degrees. So it'll be right here. Wait. Right here. Is that right? Yeah. That's that's pretty good. So we can go ahead and actually bring up our attack disc here and plug in this course of three two four what oh, it'll be this one what is going on here let me see this <laughs> it's always easier for me to do it at the periscope I always get so turned around on the attack map so yeah three two what do we say it was there we go yeah, that makes more much more sense. So he's currently at an angle about of 20 degrees. Starboard. Perfect. And we'll put in 8 knots for here. And we'll get range from the sonar. Since it's just one lone ship. So we're closing in on his track. We're still pretty far from it. Or what? Oh, this is his track right here. We're around, I guess, 1.8 kilometers. So we should be in a pretty good position to launch our torpedoes. Let's go ahead and slow it down quite a bit and try to maintain our depth of 13 meters. I don't think our conning tower is breaching too much. Uh, it might be now though. Don't want to get too close to where our torpedoes won't arm. Let's go ahead and start moving a little bit more. I can't tell. I think it might actually be a British ship. It certainly is armed. We, I see two deck guns. One in the bow and one on the stern there. Good thing, good thing uh, deck gunning it isn't an option because my dumbass probably would have tried. All right, let's go ahead and see the three knots. Uh, um, I really can't make out the flag. It's sailing blacked out, so I'm assuming it is an enemy. Oh boy, oopsies. All right, we'll go ahead and wait until this gets a little closer to zero. We'll fire at around here, around three, three, four, seven degrees. That's probably going to be a good place to shoot at. Probably closer to three, four, five. 
Let's see if I can see the flag. I actually think it is, I think it's American, actually. Oh, it's so hard to see. All right, let's go ahead and use a little bit more time compression here. Hopefully this bugger doesn't see me. In fact, scope down <laughs> before he does see me. And I want you to follow him. What the fuck? Oh, God damn it. And there goes another decoy. Let's see here. Let's try this out. Range of target is 800 meters. 810 meters to be exact. That's actually not too bad. Anyway, I want you to follow this ship, please. Oh my god. Our hydrophone operator makes me angry right now. Alright, let's go ahead and brace scope. 810 meters, that's pretty close. Uh, yeah, I guess I can see it. We are very close to firing now. Oh wow, this ship is armed. It has quite a few flat guns on it as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to hydrophones. Seven hundred and eighty meters. Lock on target. There we go. We'll do seven point five. Let's round down. Okay, and let's see. We'll do a five degree spread. Open tubes one and four. And we overshot a little bit. Our torpedoes are gonna to have to track a little to the left or right, I'm sorry, but that's fine. Tubes one and four fire. All right, tube one away, tube four away. It looks like we have around a 45 second run time. Mm, C stay too harsh. Those look fine to me. We'll find out. There they go, they're swimming. I think we have two impacts here. Uh, the angle is pretty harsh, but with magnetic Torpedo pistols, there we go, on. there's one. Torpedo there we go, on. and there's two. We aimed a little, hit them a little in the aft, but overall, not a bad attack. Two magnetic torpedo impacts as well. I do think that'll be enough to put the ore carrier under. Alright, let's go ahead and put our scope down and go down to 25 meters. I want to avoid getting sighted. Although they do know we're here, I don't want to get shot at. <laughs> that would uh, not be pretty for us. Oh, and there we go. It is indeed an American ship. And I, I do think she's going to have issues. Those were two pretty good hits right in around the engine room, so... And they were magnetic, so flooding is going to be pretty harsh. So we'll go ahead and turn and stalk this ship. Let's go ahead and turn northwest here. And we'll follow her. Wow, she's still chugging along, to, much to my surprise. And I think she actually is slowing down. Yeah, she does not look very good. So I'll continue to stalk the target as she sinks. Am I? Ooh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> the waves are lapping over certain... Uh, quite a bit so I'll go ahead and stock this ship until she sinks and I'll get back to you guys hopefully whenever she's finally going under and she is now going under we just got the confirmation the crew has abandoned the ship and uh, yeah she's going down it looks like she's still bobbing up there a little bit but I think you can see the stern is almost completely submerged and it's not going to take her much and uh, it's pretty deep here so there's no way the Americans are going to be able to raise her or anything like that so that is one ore carrier down. Let's take a look. 7,089 tons. Not too bad. So overall, a fairly successful first attack. Let's go ahead and continue on our course. We're down at 25 meters here and reloading our torpedoes. We already got tube one reloaded and we're about an eighth of the way through tube number four. And yeah, I think that'll bring this episode to an end. Overall, not too eventful. Uh, the journey was long, but it paid off with our first American ship sunk here, the Lone Ore Carrier. And I'm pretty happy with the performance of my magnetic torpedoes this time, too. Uh, I think 
I'm finally getting used to them and uh, getting better at using them. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you guys on the next episode.